You have the harsh desert environment where it rains once every year or two, not much life, and you have the polar opposite when you put your head underwater. Same reason it tastes like the Great Barrier Reef and the Bazaruta Archipelago and all the famous sort of dive sites in the world are so popular. The Nubian Flats is as good or even more wilder than those areas. It's an underwater wilderness like few others. You feel totally isolated, like completely, completely out there. Like it literally feels like you're the only three people in the world. We are in the south coast of Sudan, North Africa, in the Red Sea, situated between the north coast of Africa and the Saudi Arabia. We have dubbed them the Nubian Flats. Essentially a desert with a crystal clean ocean around it. We are a long way from shore and a long way from civilization. It's quite peaceful, but yeah, we're just a bit away from everything at the moment. So the Nubian Flats differs where it doesn't have a tide, and so you're essentially fishing a saltwater lake. You're fishing flats in a saltwater lake. We're currently on the Felicidad, which is a 110-foot dive vessel. And only in the last five years has been utilized as a liveaboard fly fishing vessel. The deep south of the Nubian Flats is made up of a number of small islands and they're surrounded by small flats with deep drop-offs. Some drops going down to 800 meters. Yeah, I don't swim over the edge of that and look down. I've, I've poked my head over there and it's, it's quite terrifying. It's, it's quite an airy feeling. Yeah, it's, it's just black. It's like you can't see anything. The Nubian Flats is, without a doubt, the, the triggerfish capital of the world. Triggers are extremely, extremely frustrating, but also very rewarding. Each triggerfish has their own personality. No matter how happy it looks, you don't know how it's going to react. You often have a lot of frustrating moments when you're working hard for triggers. You get to that last step where you're there with your net, you can see the trigger, and it almost like he looks at you and says, right, cheers, mate, goes into a hole. Ooh, that's when it's time to uh, put the big boy pants on, put on the gloves, and go fetch him. Yeah, it's, uh, it gets personal. So the guides, uh, yeah, the guides take that super personal. <laughs> What's your favorite? My favorite, definitely the Jeet. What yeah. about him? He's just, he's the big bully of the reef. Like if he wants to eat your fly, he's, he's gonna eat your fly. And good luck stopping him. The GT fishing on the Nubian Flats is one of the most exciting fly fishing experiences, in my opinion, you can have. They're just so ominous, you just can't predict them. When I see a jeep coming in through the waves, it pretty much goes to slow motion. So he'll come up and that wake will build super slowly, super slowly until you see his eyes. Their eyes are, are out the water, angry. His forehead is often above your eye line, and so it feels like this thing's gonna kill you if the fly doesn't get eaten. You've got two anglers who are both, in essence, competing for the same fish coming in. You know, all three of you want someone to hook up really badly. You just bounce it in front of him, swell goes down, builds up again, and so you just sort of cap and mouse him all the way to your angler. And then it's control your line, pull him out, fly goes in, one strip, lock down. just absolute chaos. It's just mental. Yeah, no one can contain themselves. <laughs> like you can't describe it to somebody who's never fished with GTs. You gotta come and experience it and then you understand. It's, a, it's an adrenaline rush, like not much else in, in fly fishing. It's a flat fishery on the African continent that's a saltwater lake that's just totally, totally unique. 
the species are unique. What you see and how you see them and how you fish the species is just completely different to anywhere else. There's always something happening, always something going on, always something getting eaten or trying to eat something. <laughs> you're going to see some amazing stuff, no matter if you're a terrible angler or a good angler, every day you're going to see some incredible things. The crew is super neat, they're all uh, salty sea dogs. Some of the crew know this water more than, I mean far more than we've known it. They've grown up fishing these waters, their fathers have grown up fishing these waters. All local Sudanese, born and bred in Port Sudan, they have lived their life on the sea. Without a doubt become a family. All the guides that I've met and guided with have become friends forever. You know, you meet guys that share a passion a burning passion like you, it's bound to become a really awesome friendship. And if it wasn't for this operation and operations alike, I don't think you'd have that luxury. Yeah, I'm gonna miss them, that's for sure. But there are more seasons to come, don't you worry.